So today we have a very exciting stream, and also that was uh, Coffee is a Beautiful Thing from oh, from the soundtrack to the game where they cremate the roadkill. Hi, Alex. But yep, our very important thing is to add dialogue hints and forward evaluation. So let's just start one by one, because basically... If I'm going to make this sort of dialogue system, you know, a mechanic where the player can use any item they want, I need to indicate it, you know, because basically the thing that really kills a lot of like sort of unconventional mechanics is improper tutorialization and improper like indicators. So if I want the player to know that they have the option and oftentimes are required to use items or use their journal, when they're talking to characters by selecting certain items or selecting certain journal notes, I need to indicate that that's important. Because otherwise they're not going to do it. And yet last time, I made a ladder. There's a minor bug with the uh, shadows I'm noticing, where they'll snap to a position, but that's okay. Yeah, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that if any of these journal notes are important, the player will be able to... Eventually, I should make sure that that doesn't happen still. That'll be part of the, that'll be part of the uh, playthrough. Actually... Yeah, you know what? I'll put in my... I'll put in the to-do list... Maybe not for now, but for later. Um, don't show empty subject lists. This will be like a can ship, bug, journal, visual, B3. Into the ether it goes. All right, let's forward evaluate each label and see what type of block it is and if the player can use it. Because yesterday I very briefly started on that because we have this new evaluate labels function so let's do let's do evaluated labels or something like that bar actually hmm <laughs> what is sorted labels Do I use this anywhere? Oh, I do. Okay. 
If L in sorted labels, if L begins with type, continue. Hmm. I should figure out what these actually do. Well, sequence.labels A is less than sequence.labels B. Oh, that's okay, that orders them by line. Okay. That's fine, probably. Alright. Var label results or label states dictionary will be a map of label names to label states, which will be enum. And they'll be like uh Unused. Well, actually, hmm. If I forward evaluate them, hmm. Ah well, I'll I'll figure out what exactly I want to do with this soon. But basically, we'll have um like. Quest, optional, visited, and for now it'll just be called like invalid. So this basically means we don't meet the conditions for this label. And this will map strings to those. So let's do, uh... Actually, can I just do... Ah, I won't do that yet. So for L in dates, if L dot, hmm, so I need to execute this. Evaluate labels. Let's go back to here now. Maybe. So this will just return anything. Oh, variant isn't a type. Is any a type, maybe? No. Ah, well. It returns something. In fact, it'll return... There we go. 
So for L in label states if execute label uh, hmm this will be tricky let's do L in sorted labels for state equals um, no, var res equals if not res label states l equals label state dot invalid. So basically, if this condition is false, it's an invalid label. So basically, we can't jump to it. Otherwise, We're going to do var old state actually equals if var old state equals. Okay, so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to get the previous state of it. So if uh, sorted l in states old state equals oh wait not quite or underscore failure okay now it's getting a little bit better so we'll set it to invalid and continue otherwise if old state is equal to old state dot invalid if it's in the old state we get that previous state then, uh, if, I guess for now, what we should do is, um, if old state not equal to state dot optional, And for now, because this will be just the first part of this, forward evaluating things, because then I can mark some of them as quest blocks, because basically what I'm doing right now is, let's see, I'm going to, how many of these things do I have? See, so I have a bunch of files open, so I'm going to close some of those. I'm working on another comic. Okay, but basically these blocks. So it's gonna go through each of these. It's gonna figure out if these conditions are true and it's gonna mark this one, like let's say this one's false, it'd mark it as invalid. And then if this one's true, it'll mark it as valid. And eventually what it should do is it should mark it as a quest or optional. So because this has quest right after it, it should be marked. Well, I guess what I could do, I know what I can do.
Oh, I'll save that for later, though. That'll be how I do that, though. Okay, label states L equals state dot optional. And let's do if old state not equal to new state. Actually, let's do if old state is less than L. Notify new items L and uh, label states L. So I'm gonna have to figure out, how do I do my label conditions and stuff? Or how do I split it off into the correct type of a label? Let's go to special, or underscore go to special. That's not quite what I need. Find item is what I need to figure out. Found label equals percent as if type it fall through else blank. Hmm. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna split off a of left parenthesis. And if the first thing in the list is a note or an item, then we notify. Else we don't notify. So var type dot split with colon then false zero if this is a string pass elif label type equals note pass else return. Well, I guess we don't need that. Okay. So then we're gonna do uh, player. So we're gonna get the player UI. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start working on the uh, little notifier UI. So let's go to player.tscn uh, So we need uh, 2D. So what we're going to do is where is this? Oh wait. Yeah, so we'd have these little red, this little red symbol come up for like a quest, and for the optional ones, which are what we're going to be doing now, we'll do this one. So it should get that. So let's do uh, our base node. Base node equals um, hmm. So where is our dialogue viewer? Oh, we're in. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I see. Maybe I should do a sig. I don't care. I'll. I'll. Let's do slash. So buttons slash raid slash indicator. 
Well, no, you know. Buttons. Item context, maybe. What am I looking for here? Because I want a notification for... Okay, here they are. Item context slash VBox container slash um, go inventory slash button. And for this one, it's almost the same, except it's going to be show journal. And then we're going to match state. Because we're going to have a var child node. Okay, and then child node equals base node dot get indicator quest slash no indicator optional slash This is the nice part of me duplicating this repeatedly. So these things here these indicators are attached to these buttons. So in fact, I could make these a little less repetitive. Button indicator optional slash animation player. And then we have indicator quest and indicator uh, visited. Okay, so now, how do I test this? Because basically this should be everything... Oh wait, no, not quite yet. If, so child, if not child node dot is playing, and not, uh, parent is visible, Then child node dot play indicate. Actually, let's do it like this. So basically, if it's not visible, it'll indicate it. And then eventually, I'll need to figure out how to actually properly set this up so that they're not visible anymore. Unused argument. The argument completed is never used in the function back. Oh, uh. For now, it'll just be that. Because that's going to be another part of this. But okay. How do I get this tested? I guess I have to do... I can do it in the test scene. So let's go to proof. Let's see. So which one has... Journal entries. I guess they all do, but let's do, um, I think intro Armstrong. Armstrong probably has the easiest thing. Can I do item? How do I do my pistol? 
Okay, yeah, I can do both of these. Okay. So let's get this pistol from this guy. And this should be... Yeah, that's start. This, this doesn't change in the middle of dialogue, so I don't need to make a signal for it, but... We'll get the item. So let's start this scene. Which one of these guys? This guy's Armstrong. So yeah, we have no indicators. Oh wait. Execute label. EX equals label conditions L. Invalid get L power. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Hang on. Did I misunderstand how execute label works? Okay, what is label conditions? Label conditions are two of them. Item web pistol, not equal blah blah blah. Note rally is not equal to blah blah blah. Sorted labels. Hmm. Ah, okay. For L in sorted labels, if not L in. So I guess we should actually not use sorted labels. I don't know why I was using sorted labels actually, because we don't need it currently. I guess it was so that I had the index, but I can just do label conditions there. Or res is dictionary and failure in res. skip this song. And I also forgot that I need here uh, two different notes. So var uh, Because we also need, um, what do we need? I need here this indicator. So which ones are these? So these are the... Yeah, these buttons slash trade. Need to have indicators on them. So what I'm going to do is actually have these here as... And then I'm going to have a uh, bar key equals nothing. And then we'll do equals uh, base node dot get node key. And this will be buttons slash raid slash indicate. No, I guess just button slash trade. Because yeah, then we do all of these same nodes here. And then I can do indicators.get node key 
if not indicator dot get parent dot visible there we go because basically we use whether it's an item or a note to select which button will be highlighted here so like it'll have the little indicator next to this one or this one and then we use the type of the indicator to select the subtype so whether which one of those we show okay so i think this is all good so now if we go back to here nothing should be broken though i think there was something broken still okay so that's all good looks like nothing is fancy there then i'm going to do item web underscore pistol and there should have been okay and now look i can use an item because i can use the pistol but it should show up immediately when dialogue starts, not just when it does the uh, other thing. So we can test that. We can do that right now in a player. So I think this will actually maybe reduce the overall uh, time that it takes, because I was worried that evaluating all of the things would be a problem. But then I remembered Whenever you use an item, it goes through all of the labels with conditions, and it checks each one of them. Or actually, it goes through every label, I think. Yeah, because these ones don't have conditions. So yeah, now I can just tech, check, check that, I guess. Okay, but UI.activate. Hmm. No, wait, no. Uh... Dialogue viewer. When do we start dialogue? I wish there was a button to automatically hide this part, because that's the part that I don't like. Like, I, I want more vertical space more than anything. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's just start. So what I can do is just... Uh, evaluate labels. Then we can advance. And then what we do here is sorted labels. Um, if L in if L in con label conditions, we'll set that. Because basically, I need all of these because I because you know. This label is for an item, so I need to be able to indicate that it is true when the player has an item. However... Oh wait, that's actually gonna be... Hmm. That's not how my items work yet. This just indicates that we have... that this is true. Yeah, so I'll show you exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah, those are both true, not correct. Because basically it's checking that there's no condition attached to it. So this is a thing, but it's not correct, basically. So let's do, let's do another thing here. Which is we need to now break down how these items work. Um, hmm. Execute label. I know what we need to do. Label conditions needs to have some fancy things attached to it. Hmm. I th 
think. Well, yeah, I can do this. So what I'm going to do is E and then... Uh, E2 or something like this. Because we need... Our E2... New. And then... Hmm. This is going to be tricky. R underscore um, special label equals dot new so we need item or note so then we have escaped parentheses, and we have a uh, tilde, and this also needs to be in parentheses as well, because this will be a capture group, tilde, parentheses, tilde and parentheses, plus. Okay, so this will match anything that's either item something, or note something else without uh, this. Very robust thing. And we'll just have to evaluate both of those conditions attached to it. Okay, invalid escape sequence. Oh yeah, because I need to double escape these. Okay, and that should give me what I want. Label. So let's go back to label conditions. So if Oh wait, we actually need hmm This is going to be... Hmm. Oh wait, no, this won't be too bad. Hang on. Else. So let's do uh, first if... Uh, label dot... So if r special label dot match and equals our special label dot match uh, label if m yes. so this should be that should be huh? Kind of rejects his work. Okay, it's search, not match. Okay, so in this case, our type equals m dot get string one for arguments equals m dot get string two we can do if type hmm.
get this simplified. Okay. So if we have matches for these, the type is m.getString. Yeah, this is okay. He lived. Else. R E equals. Parse. Special label. Label. Uh, if E. Okay, bunch of stuff here. Basically, we now have this new sparse, uh, parse special label because I'm gonna make it so that this is gonna be code. So it checks if you have this note before it lets you, and that'll be how it evaluates it. And then what I can do is when we get into here, so if m, so let's just do if not m, return null. So what is this? This will be L, because this is just a regular, this is one that has no conditions in it. And also, we don't need to deal with um, S plus and uh, so we can ignore any white space in here. Oh wait, no, star. Lots of stuff here, but if type equals item, uh, ex equals or ex dot parse. Actually, we don't even... Oh wait, no, I do need that. So, otherwise, if the type equals note...
and then we'll do print or if or ex dot r res equals ex dot parse ex string if not if res not equal to okay There we go. And the, oh, so this also this should return that. Okay. So I guess what I should do right now is let's print. see if this works. So basically, I did a bunch of work now to convert these into special little labels. The label conditions actually won't work. Oh wait, yeah. So let's do var ex equals label conditions l if uh, ex is expression Expression in condition. Execute global self. If ex execution has failed, return failure. And then var res equals true. Oh wait, no. Um, what do we do? I guess if there's multiple conditions, if not result, return res. Else. Res equals. Oh wait, eh, that's fine. It'll just return the most recent result of it. Okay. Complicated stuff. Let's see if it actually does what I want it to do. Not quite. Oh, because this is supposed to be cons. Okay, so let's see what happened here. Execution failed for note the tree tower. Hmm. Did I did I do this wrong? Because I'm seeing here execution failed 
invalid named index global for base type object. Hmm. Oh wait, it's because I need this. Okay. Yeah, because I need that right here. Okay. So now this should actually convert those into like valid and existing functions. So it's converting each of these. So like note host is turned into global dot has note and then quotes host. And now I can go to global and make sure it actually has the function has note. It does, good. None of those look like they're going wrong. And then we also see that we don't have anything here. But if I do this item, web pistol, uh, it did not, it did not execute this. Hmm. All right, well, let's remove this now because that looks like it's working. or notify. So if not result or result equals this, continue. Hmm. Let's see if we get to here. Uh. Oh, right. We do because it's uh, here. Hang on. Yeah, okay. That's because of these. Um, let's notify. Let's go to. Well. Let's just print that for now. Okay, so what are our labels? So we've updated all of these. Okay, and I see that the pistol is not in there. So let's do item web pistol. So when I did that, it should have updated again. Oh wait, no it doesn't because I don't update. Hang on. Yeah, okay. It's because I don't I it's because I forgot to add items to the global signal thing. So let's do I don't know, you know what? I might just make a signal called like thing changed or something. Uh, let's keep that. 
there as well. And we'll also do it here. And to avoid duplicating this signal, I'll do that because a note already emits this signal. Okay. So now I can remove all of these so I can do anything changed. Self evaluates items. No, evaluate labels. Because now I don't have to do sort of the up, or sort of like the the ever-increasing, I don't know, arms race of signals that I'll add to the global thing. I can just make it so that if anything changed, it has the signal, anything changed. So that way the dialogue can reevaluate itself. Okay, but now, if I do, for example, item, weapon, pistol. Uh, not quite. Hang on. Uh, what's the error here? That's the same one as before. Let's make sure that this is actually being called properly. Okay, so then, oh, wrong thing. Item, weapon, pistol. So it did not call it again, even though we are connecting anything changed. Global, anything changed. Add note, create task, complete task, add item. So add item should emit the signal. So, because if I go back, and then if I do this again, we can see that it does come up. So yeah, that works. And eventually I'll make it so that the next step will be marking those as visited, but for now, how do we make sure that these work? So we have up this updating. Oh, okay. It did. It did update. I think. Okay. Yeah. So that should have worked. Maybe it's... hang on. What if we go to the world? Do these... Because these should be invisible by default when the reset indicator thing... yeah. So yeah, these should... these should be invisible. So that shouldn't be it. Noted by Notify new item.
and eventually I'll need to make these little indicators more obvious, but okay. So nothing yet. Then if I do item, uh, weapon, pistol. Did that, okay, so that didn't work though. What does, what does item do? But, okay, so because the journal updated, because now I can use a note here, it says, And also, I need to hide that indicator here. So let's go back to Dialog Viewer. Reset. Where do I do that? Because this little uh, thing here. One of these, in the trading thing, I guess. Yeah, in this one. This viewer. Control scheme on dialogue event. Indicator optional. Uh, I'll remove this thing here. what I'll do is just have the same thing here of like uh This is not, then we need to return, wait, no, then a dot play. Okay, okay and init signal new contextual reply. We will not do this, we'll do indicate or by contextual reply. And we'll have this deleted. There we go. And eventually this should actually like to do indicate it on the specific button. That'll be for later. So that should be fine. So now we need to figure out what the other signals that I do are. Because that indicator is wiped. And I think it's because the item context... Viewer on context canceled, closed. Button straight indicator optional. Let's uh, disconnect that. Because that's going to be... I'm going to do something else with that now. Because now this whole UI mess... Can I just... Hang on. I wonder if I can make this. I shouldn't do that yet. 
because I'd like to have this just be its own scene, so that way I don't have to load the entire player scene, and I can, like, properly organize the scripts. Because right now, a lot of my stuff is just kind of a mess. But okay, event... none of that actually gets to the root of the thing, debug, which was that when I do item, it does not do, I guess it does do global add item, but then why doesn't this signal fix things for me? Like because when I do add notes, that also does this. Oh wait, I think I might know. Anything changed? If it's too early, is that what's happening? So I'm gonna omit anything changed at the very end, actually. Because I don't know, it might do something that I'm not, or that I'm forgetting. Like these signals here. Uh, wait, what did I do there? Actually, do I... I should probably... So I have that little log thing. I should probably also make that update when you get new tasks and stuff. Wrong place. I'm gonna just add that here. So like, uh... uh log, new, and completed tasks, marked locations, and new people in the UI log thing, if that's already. And that'll be, that'll be, I don't know, for a later version, UI. <sighs> okay. Oh, look at that. Okay. The notes work. I keep I keep forgetting that. Item, weapon, pistol. Oh wait, but now, now it's not gonna show up because... Oh wait, and it didn't show up there either. Like it's not showing up here, even though I have a new thing. Because if I do this now... Yeah, now it shows up. That's so weird. But why does that... Why is that the only one that doesn't work? And I'm gonna move down my desk. Cause I just I don't get it. Cause I'm emitting the signals in the same place, I'm pretty sure. I guess I can just let's just print and debug it. So global add item. This anything change signal is being emitted here. Maybe it's emitting multiple times. No, but then, no, but it would do it would do this. And also, evaluating labels, evaluating labels. Okay, but this is updating updated label. Item weapon pistol at main speaker and tutorial. But it feels like. It feels like it's not updating at the right time, though.
And let's also go to... Um... Ah, well, this is fine for now. Because that notification is not showing up. Actually, I wonder if I can do emit signal anything, and then we can do uh, dialog viewer evaluate labels. Oh, I see. Because, so this is only a contrivance of this particular thing. Hmm. What if we did something different, then? So, like, we have start, um, main speaker. Let's do, like, if there's not a main speaker. So, like, this will indicate that we're not in dialogue. Okay. Wait, why do we set global can pause? Do I set that anywhere else? in the dialogue viewer. Huh. Why do I set it false here? Cuz I can pause or I can pause. I don't know. I don't know where I use that. Okay, but that's that's a story for another day. Let's see if this works. So basically, the only issue was because I was using the command line, the dialog wasn't visible, so therefore it wasn't updating. Because... Uh... F12... There we go. Well... Well, and look at that. And now it shows up right when I right when I update, because now it's now it's checking if there's a main speaker, not if it's invisible. So it's checking if we're in dialogue rather than if it's actually showing. Hmm. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is uh, if well let's do the complete quest or what should we do special go to I think I'm getting my brain confused. Okay, here we go. Dialogue viewer. Okay, so I think now we actually have the indicators for, uh, or we have forward evaluation, basically. So now the next thing will be to add UI indicators for each type of hint. So what I'll do for that is what I was showing off. I'm gonna do. Hmm. I think I might add a special new type of quest thing. Well, maybe I can do like just that.
or like at the at the end of the line or something like this. No, that'd be that'd be a little confusing. Let's do like a, Because yeah, I just realized, because what I realized is if I do this, then this means that only condition, like this is also a quest node. So this means that I don't have this now. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe have like, what do I want for the syntax here? to indicate that a node is more important. Because I could do something like that, or maybe at, because I'm not using at anywhere. I could just, eh. yeah, let's do an at. That seems fine. So that'll be instead of this uh, quest node here, because that would require me to actually for not only like you know, evaluate each of these, but then also evaluate the next line of dialogue, which could potentially have like side effects. And then I have to determine if it has side effects or if it's just like the quest node. And also it sort of breaks the spirit of it, which is that like these are lines of dialogue that are being executed after you enter the node, not things that can be read beforehand. But yeah, basically it'll be like at, at. Okay, so that's going to be how I indicate it. Our special label. So there can be an optional at sign, uh, our special label, search label, type this. So if type dot begins with at type equals type dot substring one. And we'll do a new Boolean, so it'll be bar quest type equals false, quest type equals true, hmm, and then let's do like, if quest type Because this function quest ex or quest var so this is how I'm going to indicate that oh I already have it Okay, so this is not going to be part of that. This will be part of the parse special label. And let's also make it like this. So now we're getting into some fancy stuff. So basically, if it's a quest type, so it has this at sign, it'll use this to indicate that this is a special function. 
and then we'll return EX. And then let's go to where we evaluate that EX. So if it's a quest type, evaluate labels. Or no, execute label L or E or L, whatever it is. So if, okay, so that's good. So if res is dictionary, the wrong quest equals res is dictionary and quest in res. Hmm. No way. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna simplify the quest function at least from my end. So, if B return quest true, else return false. Kind of a dumb system, but basically. This means that I get a distinct dictionary that I can then check for. So that means that it is a quest type. And we know, because I set it up that way, that the that execute label always evaluates the last instruction and sets that result equal to this. So it goes through each of these and it just sets that there. Unless there's no unless it was false for some reason, then it breaks it. And we know. that this expression 2 is the special label. So the, the special label is always the last condition. So therefore, it is the one that's always set to the value of execute label. So therefore, I can check for this. And so that means that I can do optional if not quest else state dot quest. And now, hopefully, I can figure out any sort of interesting places where I can have this. So let's just do like, for now I'm gonna do item like cube or, well, do I have a cube still? Yeah, I do have cube. Let's test this. Let's not put that like right in the middle of this stuff though. There we go. Actually, why are these? Well, I don't care. Item cube. There we go. That's gonna be that. So let's do this now. So now if I do item cube, I should get a red indicator. So let's do failed miserably. What happened? Item added cube, evaluating labels, updated label at item cube. Hmm. I think we need to bring back my uh, parse special label function printing. So let's do this again. Print uh, label. This needs to be in here. Oh wait, where the, where the hell does this need to be? If type, no, so this can't be that. If label begins with app. 
that was part of it. It was, it was basically just ignoring it. So now if we, now if we talk to this guy, so if we go to like at item, uh, uh, oh bug, okay, unknown label type tem. In fact, we can just do. See, I forgot that I set up rejexes for a reason, which is that they have capture groups, so I don't need to, like, do substring on things. I can just exclude it from the capture group. So yeah, now if we look at these, at item cube is quest global count cube. And it didn't work. Item added cube. Hmm. Oh, wait, hang on. This should just be anything. Because it's setting it to null because it's actually an integer. Okay. Someday, eventually, this will work. And actually, this should just be B. Because sometimes it's failure. And I should propagate those properly. But okay, now... I should be able to do... Item? U. It didn't work. Okay, so what did that do? That updated the label. Add item cube. Item added cube. Oh wait, it's because the type... dot replace at nothing this syntax is getting complicated now look at that now we got that but let's also do Look at that. So now we have two different notifications for two different types of items. But I see now. Hmm. How do we do this? Oh, wait, hang on. We can just go to... Um... Right, I need um sorted labels. Or how do we do use item? Find item. So this is the found label. So for item in items. If L dot begins with type item. Hmm. For L in sorted label, so okay. So we need for L in sorted labels. So let's do if L dot begins with. At L equals L dot substring one. So if L in label state, so let's do L in 
states and not doing this right right okay but basically if it's in the label states and it's invalid oh wait no we need real l here so this is going to be like label which is hopefully allowed This way I can do here label if label in label states and label state string is equal to state invalid will continue and actually because we can we know for a fact now now I don't have to worry about this execution being complicated because so if this label state is invalid, that means that we don't have the item that's in here. And uh, we don't have to bother with this thing. Because we know we don't have any of them. Okay. And this should be evaluated every time that it's relevant, so I don't have to rerun that each time. So this should make using the nodes slightly more performant. But let's make sure that it actually works still. And then I can do item weapon pistol. Oh wait, why did he why did he back out there? Why did he exit there? Uh let's do back here. Wait no. Okay, that's the wrong thing. Item, weapon, pistol, back. And this should be exit. So the next thing will be indicating when I've visited one of these nodes, because now I can indicate the actual importance of them. And it looks like it's actually working properly. So I'll assume it is. Let's let's commit some of this stuff. And then the next things will be like nicer indicators and maybe even sound effects or something. Oh yeah, I also was making a little water room because for some reason, I'll show that off a little bit. Let's get commit M simple in or indicators for uh, using items and notes in dialog. And the next thing will be indicating when we have used it. So, like, why is this here? Like, all of these should be using back. And then we can do something fancy with... So, maybe go to can have a label attached to it or call. No, where is my uh, subtopic function?
So push stack current item. Dialogue item. Special call equals false. Um, let's do the label as well. And we are going to have a call frame for label string. There we go. Push stack current item. Hmm. Oh wait, let's do no. Uh, let's just do an empty string. Oh wait, no. Do we do... I think we do... No, we do it like here. Hang on. Push label. Go to special item dialogue item label string. Yuck, I need to do, like... This will be tricky. Because now I'm going to have to go through all of these. Because I need to figure out the exact item that the player used. I get... Well, no. Actually... No, hang on. I'm, I'm going crazy here. Let's go back all the way. I don't need the... Uh, that. What I need is to indicate the block that we're on. So where is special call? So yeah, what we need actually is the line that this is on, which I'm pretty sure, does it have? Hmm. It doesn't. I mean, I guess we could get it. Entered line. Well, this could actually be. No, I don't. Man, this is gonna be tricky because what I actually need is some way of making of defining that all of these are the same block or. Uh... I need to make the game relatively stable, because I was thinking like, well, I can track this line. Like, let's say, you know, you go to your web pistol. So like, I want to indicate that the player has done this thing. So we can do like here, uh, false. And then maybe here I'll just do like, uh, you know, I'll need to do like, How does exit work? Let's just put here as well. Function complete block. That'll eventually do something. And then in uh, back, if completed, It'll do that. Because that'll get the last call frame and do something with it. Because I was thinking, like, you know, just get the line number here, 
and then we'll have some global stat that's like, you know, block completed slash 222, or like Armstrong, you know, like Armstrong slash disgust slash block 22, 222 or whatever it is. But I don't think... Yeah, that's not gonna be good enough. So what if I just did block pistol and then we'll have like a and we'll do like not completed pistol So I need two new functions, so or three new functions, which are going to be function block. You'll have a name or like ID. A function disgust and a function uh, completed. And I just realized this gives me exactly the same issue that I had before. Hmm. What if we just did like a... Double cursed. Yeah, because I'm thinking now. Well, actually, I can't do I can't do that. I can do this, though. So. Well, hmm. Well, I kind of don't like this either. How do I do this, then? Because the entire thing that I want to avoid is, you know, having to, you know, evaluate the next statement to make sure that it's something. But I do think this is the right way to do this stuff. Like, instead of having this, like, plus stat Armstrong slash pistol, this will just be, like, anytime the player has discussed something, or anytime the player enters this block, it adds this flag after it's been completed. You know, one way or another. Hmm. Because I could do just by default, it gets this label. Yeah, I'll do that by default. And then I'll figure out the non-default thing, because it's very it's not as common to have like multiple labels attached to the same note. Like this one, for example. Or um, if we go to Jericho. Side content arena Jericho. Because I want all of these to also be attached to the same object. So these ones I might do like uh N or something, or like, um, I guess I'll just start figuring out what I want to do with this. Mm. 
But yeah, so we have something like this. And that's a little bit redundant, but this, this at least just makes it explicit that these are all the same section. And then we're going to do back false. And let's do back true here. Or complete block here. Okay. Because now I can have a block name attached to each of these. Uh, let's do, let's go to call frame. Uh, let's do like block name equals this. So yeah, by default, it'll just use the label name. Hmm. Well. I just had a clever idea. If we know what block we're in, why do I need that? When I can just do discussed completed and then we can do um, wait hang on I'm gonna do discussed uh, context do I have a function called context no okay yeah I need to I need to rename this to context and then we need function context will be function discussed. I do string equals nothing. And this doesn't exist. And this will do, if it's an empty string, it'll check the current context, or the current call frame for a block name. And we need to do, uh, I guess that's fine as that is. Because all of these, the only thing I'll need to keep track of is making sure that any time that I have multiple stats attached to the same thing, that's like, you know, something like this. Well, you know what? These are actually two separate things, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, these are two separate stats, actually. Because this context is important here. Well. Ah, that's fine. That's fine as it is. Because, yeah, eventually now I can actually start making these. Now I can start using this more judiciously or... Uh, okay. Now that I have that all set up, let's first go to the parsing for the special labels. Because now we need to split off the actual expression code from here. Our special label. So let's do um, if l dot find.
Block names. Hmm. Did I ever mention why I didn't want this? Basically, if I press return, I didn't want to use the line numbers because then that would invalidate like this thing. Or yeah, it'd invalidate both of these because it would check this line number. And so it's like, oh, you've completed the block at line 115. But then if I change any dialogue whatsoever and patch the game, you know, the player's save is corrupted, basically. So hopefully with the way that this works, it'll be a little bit better. But okay, so now we can do... Um, source node, P source node, for L in sequence.labels. Let's have a dictionary called block names, I think. Okay, I think this does well. No, we need... We don't need this. In fact, I don't even need that. Wait, no, and then we need um, bar label ex equals uh, l. Because I actually do need it without the expression, so bar label or s equals l dot split s1 label ex equals s0. Because label ex this is going to be the label and expression, so it'll be hmm. So where else do we do L? Okay, so now we're not doing L, so that's good. Oh wait, no. Oh wait, no. Okay, that's fine. Using L here, because these label conditions should all be the same. So that should split off those. And then we can do function go to label string. Push onto the stack. Yeah, because this is going to be the thing that now we need to deal with. Because this dialog item should have the block name in it. In fact, let's make that non optional. See what happens here. Hmm. 
show context reply item dialog block name string. Okay, so this is going to be a little while. Push stack current item. Uh, oh, this means also I can use the the context from the block. Yeah, okay, I, this will be interesting. Okay, push stack current item. True. Uh, let's do like underscore coat here. Because this means I can also pretty trivially ask if the player has, like, already offered to trade a coat here. So let's do push stack current item uh, underscore exit. Oh, wait, let's do... Var, var block names equals label if not label or let's do block names label if label in block names else label and then we'll do block name and also that should not be plural Okay, there we go. Special L, use notes, um, label. Ooh, this is gonna be tricky, actually. Hmm. We need, like, L. Uh, let's do... Yeah, this is actually going to be an array. And it's going to be a dialogue item and the label that we used with it. Wait, this actually... Coat item... Yeah, this means that also, if I do a coat with, spe yeah, with special stats like this one, then it'll work like I want it to. So this will be coat item 0. Hmm. So this should all work. Only strings can be used as an index to the base dialog item. This is an array now. Oh wait, no. Code item. Okay, so this should still be current item. And then this will be code item 1. And then we do current item equals code item 0. And then we advance. Because there's something weird with the stack there. So current item equals find item exit 0. So I guess what we can do... Is... Exit one. Let's do it. Zero. Oh, how did I work this again? Bar exit item equals find item exit and then exit item one. So this way we'll automatically generate stats for these different types of things. Then we'll do return empty here. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, right. Go-tos don't do anything with the call stack, so that's fine. Yeah, because subtopics do uh, current item label or uh, block names label if label in block names else label. Um, I'm sorry, what? I don't think I, I think it, there's still things missing here. Oh wait, yeah, because find item doesn't... It doesn't return an array. Like, where do we return it? Like, return sequence.find label found label. Oh, it's gonna be return sequence.found label found label. Yeah, because this... Okay, because I can't, I can't import the type here. Okay, so now it should actually return the thing, I think, appropriately. Maybe? Let's make sure that there's no other special places. Yeah, okay. That should be good. So now it returns the, a tuple of the actual item and the label that we used to, found, to find it. Ugh, and that should mean that now, when we do back... Let's do... Uh, and I don't even need this. In fact, I don't even know how to... Well... If... Eh, let's pass on that for now. For now, what I'm gonna do... So, complete block. Bar block name equals call stack dot uh, last or something. So let's do if call stack dot empty return. The var block name equals call stack call stack dot size minus one dot block name. And let's do like function complete stack. I know what to do. Or uh, let's do speaker stat. So plus slash plus block name. And then we'll do global dot set that uh, block stat uh. hmm. Well, no, let's do like uh, I needed I need another enum. This is getting a little complicated, but basically we have Enum block state will be none or like new I guess unvisited visited completed Okay Otherwise, we're going to set it to uh, visited. So let's push the stack. So if
if global.stat is less than block state dot visited okay There we go. So now it actually marks that I've visited these blocks. And I'll do this if block name not equal to nothing. So this way, every single one of these blocks is tracking if I've entered it. So any named block without its own special name will track it. And these should be, uh, what should these be? And so I don't need this I'm stupid fail the quest please to test this anymore. All right, but how do I test this with Armstrong? I guess I can do, hmm. And also, this should not be, uh, hang on, I just realized, this, back, so if completed, complete block, else, let's mark it disgust or something. Basically, this will only be when the block is actually exited. And I should probably have this here for completed as well, in case I have something even beyond completed. But okay, this should mean that eventually this item cube will be here, but I can do, I can at least try these. And I'm going to do completed. There we go. So these will be bull, I guess. Yeah. Return global dot stat block stat greater than or equal to block state dot completed. In fact, let's do like function block state id string min state int pool turn block state id block state dot completed return block state 
ID block state dot visited. Okay, so now if this actually works, uh, almost. Hang on. There we go. Ugh. Okay, so I've added a lot of code that I haven't tested. So hopefully there's not a billion bugs that I have to, you know, solve piece by piece. So far, so good. Huh. Well, uh... Nothing... So, item... So I think it's find item is not working now. L should should L begin with a an app? Hmm. Oh, let's do a base label. I don't know if there's some sort of. I could be having scope issues there. Oh, I know. Okay, I think that is important, actually. Hmm. Let's do find item here, maybe. So what are our items? Cube found label equals uh, item underscore whatever it is. So found label should be in here. Uh, I guess there's no... Is fall through false? Oh, okay, it is false. Okay. L power. Let's swap to here. Uh... What? Hang on. It should not have gone back to the top of this. Yeah, this was uh, wrong. Because this, this F12 here... Hang on. Ah, well, okay, let's... <clears throat> okay, let's try this again. But now I'm gonna actually, like, do this correctly, I think. So let's also see what happens with this. Okay. If L dot begins with at, L equals substring one. So L is now item cube. So if not L begins with type, continue. If label in label states, where is label states here? Conditions, uh, label states. There we go. Oh, right. And then next thing I need to do is actually make it so that these... Okay. So item cube is valid. 
if items found equals false. If L, which is item parentheses cube, begins with found equals true, break, not found, found label equals L. Oh, wait. I see what it is. Okay, that was the bug. Because L is now that with the, the at stripped off. Okay. So let's stop that for now. And what I'm going to do also is when we go to label states. If the label state is visited, how do we do this? I know what to do. Okay, so if var block name string equals block names label or L if L in block names else L var block stats equals global dot get Let's do like if old state equals state dot um, visited return or like completed, I guess would be how that is. But basically, if it was already visited, we return. Otherwise, I'm actually going to replace this right now. So visited match case. Completed. Okay, so that's good there. And then we're going to do block name equals global dots or speaker stat plus block name if block stat or if global dot stat block stat equals uh block state dot completed Label states L equals state dot completed else. Okay, there we go. So now if it's completed, it's completely disregarded, or it's always notified as this. Let's see if this works. Because if this works, we're basically, like, mostly done, I guess? All I'd need to do left is the hard stuff. So let's do item Q. So now I can use this, which will hopefully not do this crap anymore. So let's just skip that. This cube is incredibly important. No. All right, so let's exit. So now if I do this again, 
use item cube uh global dot block stat hmm invalid get index complete oh completed god damn it Not correct. Complete block. Uh, completed. Block state. So if stat block state is greater than or equal to the min state. Hmm. Oh. Oh, because I. That's a biz. Wait, it. Huh. Fascinating little bug there in Godot, where it doesn't notify you if you have two enums of the same name. Okay. Item. Cube. Use an item. Cube. Okay, now let's try it again. Wrong. Not correct. So let's, well, what does the, wait, okay, next time I do this, I'm going to look at the stats specifically. see what the stats look like. Alright, so somewhere in here will be Armstrong. Okay, so we have Armstrong slash item cube at 2, which is not right. So I think, actually... Oh, it's because... Right, it's because I set this here. Because I replaced the word visited with completed in every single place where I used that before. So now when we go to uh, back, mark discussed, we'll actually do this in, yeah, go. Visited. Okay, so it wasn't some big bug, it was just a typo. That seems to be how the most confusing bugs get in here. Like, bad renames, bad undos, Okay, but now item cube. Use an item cube. Uh, oh. Resisted. And I think, so then tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow off stream, I guess, what I'll do is go through all of the dialogue and see which things are relevant to quests, give everything the right name, give everything that stuff, and then we can do, uh, use note. No, I know. Item. Because I think this will inform how I do my quest stuff in the future. Or how I lay out this dialogue, like, because now I can use, like, different 
note types for different like section names and stuff like that. Or like the indicator depends on the block label. And so if I want it to change, like if you have relevant information. Okay, so now I'm gonna insist. And then, okay, so that's almost right. But now it doesn't do the quest stuff correctly. Oh wait, I should have, yeah, cause we need completed. Or like a uh, block state dot completed. Oh wait, hang on. I'm seeing block state and label state. Oh yeah, okay. Greater than equal. Speaker stat plus. I needed that. So now it should delete that indicator. Oh yeah. And now the last thing that I need to do is actually delete the indicators when the player has used the relevant item in dialogue. So let's do use an item cube. I insist. And now, if we go back, uh, it shouldn't have had that. Hang on. Oh, I see. It doesn't reset the animations for each of these. So we need to do that. And also this. Uh, if exit item, well. Label equals, what do we want to do? So what does this array have in it? Oh, okay, actually I know what it is. If exit item empty. Exit item equals null exit. Let's see if that makes that work properly. Because I should basically just immediately exit here. There we go. Okay, so that works properly. So I'm going to actually... What should I do now? Let's do end. Uh, emit signal dialogue end. Well, Call group dialog indicator play or like get free dot call group set. Okay, so we just do the method and then I think the variables after it. Because now what I can do is go through each of these little indicators here. Because otherwise I'd have, I was thinking of manually connecting the signals one by one and, uh, or manually calling each one one by one, but I can just reset all of these when we end the dialogue. Let's see, item context is the next one. And this way, all of these indicators will be disabled by default every time that we start dialogue again. Unless for some reason we don't end the dialogue properly, but in that case we got bigger problems. But yeah, so now what I can do... 
So let's go through the epic saga of the cube. I insist. And now, what it should do is it should, because we visited the block that was associated with that red label, it should remove it, but it's not going to right now. Yeah, so now we got little indicators telling us things about things. And if we go to a new dialog, it didn't work. It didn't reset it. Hang on. What's our debug? What's our error here? Never used in function block state. Oh. Oh, wait, I know what it is. Okay. If ID... ID equals... Uh, There we go. So now I have a much more robust and sort of flexible or like compact system that I can use for that at some point. Okay, so context, added context. So added context, mention added context, add context. Okay, so that fixes that stuff, but that's not fixing my labels. And also, let's do a uh, print debug. Let's go through each of these. Dated label. So let's try this again. So I, I can see where the bugs are with this, maybe. Item, cube. Use this. And what I may want to do is remove the blue. Well, I guess the blue is fine. It basically just says, you've now completed this item. Okay. That's fine. At new item, at notify new item. Uh, so that's dialogue viewer. That's fine. Hmm. So let's also say add your indicators for each type. Marking when a block is complete, marking some blocks as quest blocks, tracking blocks of dialogue. I guess that's done. Marking when a block is complete, however, not quite done. Like it's most like it's almost all the way there. Yeah, that's that's good. Oh, wait, do I actually... Oh, yeah, I do that. Okay. So, yeah, now we have complete block and mark discussed. And I guess I should do ID as string.
Okay, there we go. I'm gonna do return, so let's do return false, and at the end of this, return true. So that way these still work as normal booleans. Okay, but that doesn't fix the problem that I have now forgotten what I'm actually- I forgot what I'm investigating. Oh yeah, the signals. Because these indicators, so if we do item cube, so that if we exit and then we talk to this guy, that's not supposed to be there because this item is not relevant to him. And I thought that having my call group, so if we did player and no, dialog viewer and get tree call group dialog indicator play reset. I mean, are these maybe there aren't. Well, no, because that's there. What if I did... hang on. What if we did indicate, though? So now if I go back to here, it should have all of them active at the same time. Yeah, like that. Then why doesn't reset work, though? Or maybe re or maybe end is just not called when I thought it was. Oh, yeah, it's just not called when I thought it was called. I thought it was I thought it was called when we exit dialog. So like if current item equals no. How do we do that then? Disabled replies, fast exit. Get next, get next. Result end. So what happens if we do result end? So return, so get next. get next continue hmm I don't know when this end function is called I can't figure this out. Like, maybe it's supposed to be here, but... Hmm. Continue or R continue if not R continue. There we go. And this might work because basically, because I don't know why I wasn't calling the end function anyway. Because like that that like disables the um, that like disables input and stuff. So it's like. You'd think I'd be doing that. I insist.
Okay, and then if we go back, look at that. It, it actually works stuff. And I think... Okay, so that seems like it was the correct thing to do. And there's probably... Like, but how do I... How do I hide it? Like... Like, I don't understand how this the viewer works. Like, maybe there's a... Like, what signals does it have? Control screen, event ID exited. Oh wait, exited. Okay. So I think actually what I can do is end here. And then I won't end here. I'll just have this back as what it was. Because, yeah, that should do this. Yeah, okay. Because that now unprocesses all of our processing. Indicators for using items, notes, and dialogues. Indicators updates in real time. And blocks can track their importance and status. Ooh, all right. Oh, I'm supposed to go on a run tonight. That'll be some late night fun. Okay. That all is looking A-OK. -okay. So I'm quite happy with where this is leaving off, because next time, what I'll need to do... So mark when a block is complete, and add appropriate hints for dialogue. Let's see. I know. Hide in... Wait. Let's complete that one and make a different one. Hide indicator when the... Because that's what the label states are partially for. Which actually would need to be something like block states because it's per block not per uh, item oh okay so that'll be plenty of stuff and that's plenty of stuff all right so i will be back on sunday Sunday, Sunday, and I'll have lots and lots of stuff done off stream, maybe, if I feel like it. But alright, see you tomorrow, or Sunday. <laughs>